And I want instead the seven year itch. <laughs> now, in our discussion, this will be one of our two touchstone texts. Now, some of you may not be familiar with the seven year itch, so I'll fill you in. The Seven Year Itch was a film made in 1955 that starred Tom Ewell and Marilyn Monroe and was directed by Billy Wilder in that really kind of gorgeous technicolor you see in some films from the 50s. You know, vivid and festive, but not as super saturated as, for example, some 40s musicals that looked a little sickly. <laughs> It was released by 20th Century Fox and was based on the Broadway play by George Axelrod that had been so successful that George Axelrod's next play was about a playwright who was messed up because his first play had been so successful. <laughs> Talk about white people's problems. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Marilyn Monroe was so criminally underrated, don't you think? By whom, you ask? She's an eternal legend? Well, by me, chiefly. You see, from my earliest childhood, I've always thought of myself as a serious actor, and acting, I believe, was the stuff, you know, Judy Dench does. <laughs> so to me, in my youthful pomposity, Marilyn Monroe was not differently talented, but untalented. But in the seven-year itch, I recognized that she was colossally and uniquely gifted. Now, I was not the only one to appreciate her talent. Lee Strasberg, the most legendary of all the legendary acting teachers, there's like three of those, right? <laughs> claimed she was one of only two actors of genius he'd ever taught. One of the most famous scenes in all of film and it's curious that a movie as fundamentally inconsequential as this one could contain a moment so indelible is when Marilyn, in her famous white, white summer dress, and who has been burdened by her top floor apartment's lack of air conditioning, stands on a subway grate. And as the train goes by, it sends up a powerful gust of air, a breeze of a sort. It's gritty and smoky and chemical, but still a breeze. <laughs> Her skirt billows up and around her, and her hands sort of splash at it. And she revels in the moment. And of course, it's smut. In that way that Hollywood got around the censor by playing text against subtext, because of course, Quite apart from the exposure of her beautiful legs, what the audience is invited to dwell on is where that wind is aimed, <laughs> and which precise, very hot part of Maryland is getting cooled down. <laughs> Even so, what a gorgeous moment. What a lovely, lovely scene. <laughs> <laughs> 